Mr. Barr, I know we've talked about this a lot today, but do you believe that uh, banks in the United States are well capitalized? <clears throat> they, they, they've said that repeatedly, that uh, banks, according to our rules, are, are well capitalized today. Our banking system is sound and resilient. So if you do believe that banks in the U.S. are well capitalized, what is the point of your capital review? The capital review is to look at uh, whether the capital rules are appropriately meeting their objectives, whether despite the fact that the, the capital in the system is strong, uh, it might be the case that it needs to be stronger uh, and that the banking system uh, might need additional capital to be more resilient precisely because we don't know the nature of the kinds of ways we might experience shocks to the system, uh, as has happened with these recent bank failures. So it's your contention that the current regulatory framework is somehow inadequate, but you just said that you believe that banks are well capitalized. I mean, uh, SVB did not fail because of inadequate regulatory capital. SVB failed because of a massive deposit run fueled by a social media blitz from some of SVB's own depositors. Uh, Concentrate uninsured deposits in large volumes of assets bearing interest rate risk that the Fed missed. So uh, you, uh, as the vice chair of supervision, missed all of that until it was too, too late. How can anyone expect any framework of regulation to work if the regulators don't implement and enforce it? We, we do need to focus on both. We need to focus on strengthening our system of supervision so that it's more agile, it's, more, it's speedier, it's more forceful. And we also need to make sure that we have the right resiliency in place in the system. A firm like SVB, ultimately the, the depositors ran because they felt that the firm was not solvent. So capital and liquidity issues are really intimately intertwined. Well, it that's wasn't, why we're it looking wasn't at capital solvent. standards. They were right. It wasn't solvent. But it was your job to make sure that they maintain solvency. And uh, I, I just I don't understand how we're going to reassess uh, capital requirements if the previous ones weren't faithfully implemented, and I, I, don't, I don't see how this is productive. The, the previous uh, capital requirements were, in fact, faithfully implemented. The question is whether they were robust enough. So, for example, in SVB's case, had they been required to record their unrealized losses and gains on available for sale securities, that would have had a $2 billion impact. So we're going so full might, circle now. I mean, the first question I asked you was, are banks in the U.S. well capitalized? It seems like the answer to that is possibly no. Or I mean, I, I'm you can't have it both ways. You, you can't say that banks are well capitalized and also say that we need to reassess capital requirements. The, the rules that we use use the term well capitalized to describe a bank that exceeds our capital requirements as they currently exist. It, it doesn't make a comment with respect to whether those are the appropriate rules. And that's what we're exploring as part of this review and part of the joint work that the three agencies are undertaking with respect to the Basel III endgame is do we have capital requirements that appropriately measure risk and are those measurements robust enough to the kinds of shocks that we might experience in the future? The size of the runs on the banks that have uh, failed would not be sustainable by any bank of their size. So I don't see any capital requirement that could be imposed for uh, certain banks that would address the concern. Um, we're just going to move on. Um, recent bank failures were prompted by poor interest rate risk management and asset liability management. To put it simply, failing at basic banking 101, these banks did not appropriately recognize or manage the interest rate risk associated with a high proportion of unstable deposits in longer uh, duration assets. This was widely recognized in recent postmortem reports uh, across your agencies. Uh, Chair Grunberg, why did the FDIC decide to base this recent special assessment solely off of uninsured deposits rather than use a risk-based assessment unique to each bank like traditional deposit insurance? The, the, um, first of all, as you know, uh, this, we're required under law to impose a special assessment to recover the cost to the deposit insurance fund of the systemic risk exception. The systemic risk exception covered uninsured deposits. That's what it was used to do. And we have authority under the law to impose a special assessment on the institutions that benefited from the systemic risk exception. As our staff reviewed it, we thought the most appropriate way to try to link the benefit of the systemic risk exception to the institutions that benefited was to track it with uh, the amount of uninsured deposits. Thank you. 